Absolutely. And, you know, intellectually masses without a Korean team, maybe they've got a very good chance of winning once again. It's the only so only one so far that's been able to stop Gambit are the Koreans. You see Fnatic right now here, pretty much focused on what they're going to do. And you can see there's actually a very focused Peke. Now, for the first time ever, I think, when we were at Worlds, it's the first time I'd ever seen Peke looking really nervous at that semi-finals at the Gala. Normally, you know, this is this is exact, exactly the same... Exactly. I don't know, I went scouts for a moment there. This is exactly <laughs> the same uh, environment that the, these two teams have been used to for the whole year round. So both of these teams will feel incredibly comfortable where they are right now. Yeah, and so they should. Like you said, they've played so many games. I think in the regular season, 28 games uh, a piece, and then... You oh, and a few extra ones. In a few extra ones. Yeah, thanks yeah. for that, Crepo. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, for you guys, it was SK that brought us into that, so uh, you... you it was also Gambit. The Gambit were on 4-0, and they lost to Fnatic, and they went... And they went 4-1. Suddenly, everyone That's was true. tied up. Uh, we, we try to make it entertaining, though. Like, at least EG <laughs> tried, you know. Yeah. And you won that game uh, mm -hmm. as well. Maybe yeah, we should entertain it. people more. I yes. think that's the lesson to be learned there. Exactly. That's it. So we're going to see you a bit more in Nivea in Season 4? Well, I do have a 100% win rate after all. and It's a, it's a big win rate the Froggen has, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think so as well. Let's yeah. not talk about sample size or, or luck or getting <laughs> carried by <laughs> Froggen's Blitzcrank at all. Let's we'll leave it at the win rate because, like, hmm, stats don't lie. But talking about smiley faces, you see Gambit once again. They are all smiley again and then, you know it's a scary thing when their guys are happy it's <laughs> they are just they're a, a deadly deadly beast and uh diamond prox i tell you what i don't know what's happened over the the, the break when since he's been to the worlds and back but he's come back a pretty stylish character if anyone's seen any of the photos coming out there married life is treating him well yeah i'm not obviously still you know when you get married you're supposed to slack off on becoming attractive and all that stuff and turn into a bit of a slob but he's doing it the other way around Look looking great slide. diamond well let's get on to the serious business here because we are into the bands and picks and we can see kazix taking out good choice alex producing some film worthy moments uh, earlier on in the tournament with that renekton against darian on the other side, Nidalee taken out. We know that Peke loves to play himself a little bit of Nidalee. Cassidin also ban uh, banned by the purple side. And we touched on the Cassidin by the purple side ban earlier. Yeah, it's definitely not what they want to do. Actually, surprised they're going to ban any because Fnatic plays Leona. And I'm wondering, because they're doing this probably because they're blue side, they're out of bans and Shivana banned. That's what exactly what I was going to talk about. They have to ban Shivana, else Fnatic just first picks it. Teresh is still up there. Uh, maybe Yellow Stars want to take it away from. Uh, from Edward there, and he might be playing Sona, which he loves also so much. Well, Reckless didn't play Lucian earlier on, so whether that's going to be a first pick, I would doubt it. It's probably going to be something maybe for Cyanide. Maybe they're going to go for that Aatrox. It's a it's a champion that both these teams have played heavily and very well in the past. I've Remember? not been impressed with it, though. There's no? still Shen. <laughs> there is still Shen up as well. That's yeah, Shen is still in here. I mean, Darian showed earlier that Lissandra very much a viable pick for him as well. Great initiations that he pulled out in the, the two games that we saw him on that. But lots of options open here. And you can see that Fnatic are taking their time with this first pick, definitely pondering what the best choice at this stage of picking is going to be. The problem is if you go like a mediocre first pick, you give two like, counter picks to Gamut maybe, immediately. Maybe the team's trying to trying to say, guys, we saw Shen earlier on. It was great. So as you're gonna play, it, and that's why he's looking so he's like no, so no, down. No, he's like, like no, okay, no, 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 no. First pick, Thresh. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because it's him picking. After all. I was like, yeah, Shen. Okay, Shen. You yeah. sure, Shen? Nah, I'll just Shen, 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 Thresh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, at least coming through, he's been bad mm. most of the games as yeah. well. Cyanide said it earlier. Like, I'm not giving like at least a trick because we're never giving anybody at least. But apparently. Normal rules don't apply for Gambit, and they, they look like they want to pick it up. Well, maybe they're not expecting Diamond to play at least in the jungle. It's something we've not seen. He's been pretty much sat on Vi the entire time, and there is the Aatrox pick. Double lockout for Cyanet. Like, two of his champions stolen immediately. Will he go for Jarvan? We don't know. I, I think that's a very real possibility uh, moving into this one now. Uh, we'll have to see. We do have Lee Sin still available, yep. something that Cyanide shied away from from a long time, but. We Just also saw him bringing out the lease in uh, to great effect as well. So really interested to see what they go for this time around. Um, and again, it seems like taking their time for this one. That Thresh pick going right up until the last second. Already, though, Aatrox and both Elise can jump immediately into the fight. So definitely an aggressive gambit. Maybe we'll see some more reserve picks coming out. Is is Pekka going to go for the Orianna again? Didn't work all too well, but maybe like the disengage and just the speed up and the shields coming out of her might be the kit they need to deal with Gambit's lineup. 
Well, what do you think Edward's going to go with here up against the Thresh? Is he going to go with the Sona, maybe, that generally they get forced into? Or is there a counter that he could use? I like what they do by just banning Annie and picking Thresh and just... Eddie has been playing a lot, he has played a lot of Zyra in the past and it does alright against Thresh. Uh, I mean, he plays Solana too, it does also does alright. Uh, maybe Janna. Main key point for Janna is basically you want to disengage when Thresh goes in. Lands a hook, gives you the, the time to like make them collide with the tornado, stop him from going in. Obviously it doesn't work if you're getting hooked yourself. Although, Thresh has to immediately follow up on his hook because otherwise this, the, the lock time will break and he can still get uh, disengaged. Not entirely sold on the on the on the on the Janna pick. The last time he played it though in a scrim against us, uh, he ran exhaust and ignite. So maybe see that here. Hmm. I'm not scared of letting those kills come his way. That's yeah, for sure. Generally not. <laughs> if uh, if anything we've learned in the past from Eddie, that is certainly it. Uh, but this Janna is still being hovered over, expecting their AD carry to come in from this one. Actually uh... going over towards Sona. If we pan the camera a little bit to the right, we probably see a very sad looking uh, Edward at this and stage of things. Note that they're picking his champion now, so he doesn't have his own choice later. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alex deciding his fate. Uh, and it will be the Lucian locked in here, so Genja picking that one up. We've seen him already bringing out the Jinx earlier on. Right now, Fnatic sat on Trundle, Garen or Fiora, not sold on any of them. Actually, I like Trundle a lot because he's a, he's a Really strong champion that a lot of people don't know how to deal with. I don't think Fnatic will end up picking him, but I just want to say, like, I'm, I'm a Trundle fan. Well, Nocturne is the jungler. We see it's the champion we saw uh, Cloud9 running earlier on today. Uh, Meteor's playing that one. But the problem with Nocturne is one of those champions that can do really well or really badly. He basically needs synergy. He needs people to follow up with. Like, Nocturne lanes generally go for, like, an all-in type. Like, you ward up, sure, buddy, but I'll still just stream, like, right through the mid lane, put my paranoia out, and just, like, you don't know where I'm coming from and suddenly I'm on your lane like all in, double all ins with gap calls that generally do really well with Nocturne or just surprising the bot lane but Lucian deals with it pretty well. I mean, Edwards might maybe the sacrificial go to take every fear there but Lucian will dash out, at least has repel, Aatrox can jump away. Not entirely sure if that's the correct pick. Ooh, Ziggs locked in and this is going to be a Lee Sin top lane as well. So Nocturne's in that jungle, we're going to see Soaz on Lee Sin. I like that, he plays a really mean Lee Sin. Mm. Yeah, definitely a very popular choice for him there and a very effective choice. The Ziggs coming in, uh, we've not really seen him much up until this tournament where he's actually been really, really popular. He seemed to do well in the Orianna matchup as well. So basically, Peke has to make a choice here. He's blue side. Alex is the counter pick. He wants something that generic does well. Orianna used to be that champion. Ari used to be that champion. I mean, could deal with any matchup, but it seems like Zig is, Zig is transitioning into being such a champion because he has a lot of wave clear, disengage with the satchel, has uh, the slowdown from his E as well, big minefield popping up in the middle of a fight. And then you have the really fun ability to cast the bomb coming out on top of people. And it's it's a well versatile champion that can do well against a lot of different things that Alex might throw at him. Well, Alex has, of course, got the counter pick, so he's deciding what his fate's going to be in the mid lane. Malphite would be an interesting choice for him, and it looks like that's what it's going to be. So the big rock in the mid lane, is it going to be up against the Ziggs? And are they going to lane switch? What's going on with this? That's going to be really interesting as to like, as to their wave clear. I mean, every every time you see a lineup, you need to assess like different things. Split push, team fight, pot like potential, like vision control. Obviously, they need the support. And then just like, what what in terms of wave clear they have? They don't have that much. Only Lucian ulti like for one wave. I imagine they might even send Malphite mid, just farm up against Ziggs, maybe take the harass, and then just all in engage. They do have really strong engage. Malphite knock up can be followed by Aatrox into a cocoon, into a crescendo, and meanwhile Genja standing at the back just sniping people. Not entirely sure. Uh, there, there's definitely a possibility of lane swaps as well because Malphite is really tanky. Shield regenerates. Two v one definitely the place he likes being in because he's utility based. And talking about positioning, which is Obviously going to be crucial for Genji here because he's going to have three guys jumping straight in there and Eddie's going to be on the fringes of that as well to get the crescendo off. His position in this event in particular has probably been the best that we've seen of him. Uh, that 2v4 I think it was uh, up in the enemy jungle earlier on in the tournament against Cloud9. I mean, he looks... Confident. Confident, yeah. I think that's the right word for it here. He's definitely been more aggressive. He's definitely looked more confident and willing to, you know, push where usually he'd kind of sit back and act very passively. And if you look at Fnatic's lineup, for example, they don't even have that much hard, like, crowd control effects. I mean, they need an insight almost from a Cyanide coming out and just dashing behind Genja, kicking him into the fight because, as we mentioned before in these casts, Lucian does pretty well against Thresh. 
if you get flayed, you get slowed afterwards. If Lucian dashes, he resets the slow because of his E ability. Then again, if he gets uh, into a box, he can dash out again, reset the slow. He's gone again. If he wants to dodge a hook, uh, dodge a hook rather, he's gonna dash out. So Lucian, basically with one ability, he can nullify or, or ba basically band-aid anything Thresh can throw at him, and he'll need good combos coming out of Yellow Star to like seal the deal there. I wonder if some of that confidence is basically because Eddie's back alongside him. Maybe he's just in a happy place at last because. I remember when Edward left, Genja realized, he was like, it turns out you actually do need to be quite nice to your support player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I realized that one, yes, I think, you do. after a while. Yeah, mm. Yes, you do. Crepo was like, yeah, that's that's a rule, guys. That's be something, nice to your support. That's something a German AD carry can learn once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch Pete's out. It's about as nice as it gets, yeah. I think. I don't think you could get much more of a nicer AD carry. You Doesn't saw that black eye you got. It's yeah. because he wasn't nice to his support player. That's what <laughs> happens. But we are in-game, the grand final of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Fnatic versus Gambit, a best of three with $18,500 for the winner, $7,500 for the second place, the loser of this best of three. Let's talk a little bit about level one here, Crepo. Well, very passive. None of them have any like CC train they can throw on each other, like respecting. This is generally the, the Gambit we see. They don't want any wars in their jungle, so they're just settling on pink warding whatever they throw in. They might go for the typical Gambit move where AD carry and support try to mess with a buff. It's really safe because if they see too many people in there, they just back off. Uh, it leaves Diamond Prox generally exposed, but he's normally okay with that, and that's actually what we see here. Genja and Edward grouping up already, but Fnatic has played against it so much, they're possibly even ready for it. Yeah, this is exactly the position they caught out CLG with, and they're going to try the same force and a flash already from Edward. That was a quick early flash. Almost similar situation to N uh, Nien walking in towards the uh, top bush. Yeah, and he respected the play there, flashed immediately, because Stretch could be channeling his hook in the brush, and he would have no vision of it. And once it lands, it's too late to flash. So, okay flash from, uh, from Edward. Uh, it looks like Fnatic wasn't expecting them to be there. They were just doing a delayed invade. So let's have a look down some of the others. Of course, it will be Darion playing the Aatrox, starting off here with that Doran's Blade. So a fairly aggressive start from his side of things. He's going to be in that 2v1 lane. Uh, I say 2v1 lane. It's actually going to be a 1v1 lane in the bottom because Soaz is working his way down there with Lee Sin. Well, Darian on Aatrox, this is a champion that he basically was the first to bring out on the scene, I think it's safe to say, certainly in the European LCS. And it's actually okay, a champion that he's played very well with. Wicked's also champion in that top lane as well. It is a champion they've all played very well with. Ignite going down on towards Yellowstar, very much aggression. If only Edward had a flash right now, he'd be thinking I could get that power cord onto him, but it's not to be. Yeah, and that actually was not on your screen, so sorry for putting that, but that was actually basically Yellowstar engaging that with Hook, but once it died, the zone dropped and immediately counter engaged by Lucian and Sona with immense poke and that's really gets punished because Tush has no flay, has no lantern yet, no counter play possible. So even landing a hook doesn't even mean a good trade. Wow, the hook coming through straight down the middle of the two and actually Nocturne is working his way up. Fnatic with that early push that caused the flash from Edward at level one. They put a ward down in the tribush which has allowed now Cyanide to realize that he has free reign on this top side. However, with Elise still somewhere around there, they spotted him with that ward uh, that was put down by Yellow Star. Also at the, at the uh, very start of the game, they saw that Elise on that top side, and they don't want to risk it by the looks of things. No, it's, it would have been a dangerous play, but look at the mid lane right now, 16 to five already. Alex Hitch in terms of farm to Peke. This is what we're talking about. It's like, how are they going to do the wave clear? How do you possibly keep up with a Ziggs on a Malphite? Yeah, and it's really dangerous. Even even if Elise ganks him, he still has a satchel to get away. And Malphite all doesn't have that much to offer. And Diamond's coming in. Diamond's coming in. The cocoon does land, Joe. They're going to try and come in for this one, but Cyanide is there. Surely they're not going to go too deep for this one, but they will do. And you can see Cyanide forces them back away straight away. Keeps Peke safe just about. Yeah, he, he waited a long time there for that flash, really um, obviously feeling confident in the damage that was going to come his way, knowing exactly how much he could take before jumping out. We should also know that he's gone flash barrier in for this one. Didn't use the barrier in that last fight. Might need it now though because Diamond coming in the satchel will actually propel him away from the cocoon. He's safe for now. I really like what Diamond's doing here. Yes, Malphite's getting pushed in early by Ziggs. Later on, he may have some wave clear with repeated E usage, but right now all he needs to do is make that a 2v2. Top lane's comfortable knowing that the jungler is exactly where we can see him and that's really good against the Nocturne. A good flight. Yellow Star hooking on towards Genja. Pulls out the barrier already, but Genja just reacts quite quickly, but he gets an Ignite down for the process. 
and basically forces him back here. The Fnatic lane being aggressive, Satchel Charge once again from Beke, bounces away. I'm loving how much Ziggs play we're seeing this weekend. Yeah, and definitely good pressure by Diamond. You have to know that Street Cocoon's out of three, that he's landed, he's doing so, so well. No, he's now headed up towards the top lane, realizing, okay, I've spent enough time oh. down in the mid lane. Now I'm going up top as that ward comes out from Yellow Star. The lantern comes in as well. Reckless able to get away. The cocoon just flashes straight down the middle. Very efficient ganking. He's going back around because right now he's denying them farm on the top lane. Yes, they see him, but he doesn't care. He's like, okay, you're going to lose farm. You're going to get frozen. He might even help the freeze here and just let Gendra base when Gendra get back with more items. For that, he's going to be in a whole lot of trouble. It was one of those scary moments that everybody's found when you turn that light on and there's a giant spider. <laughs> it's like, ah, <laughs> quick, back away. There's a great big spider here. Lantern was flung out straight away from Yellowstar. I wasn't having any of that. So, Misui Genja has just nipped back, got himself a second Doran's Blade and Boots. Meanwhile, he's going to return to the top while Diamond takes a couple of lane techs. Okay. This is really interesting. Okay, Diamond forcing the 2v2. They're expecting Genja to show back up top, but essentially what's happening is Diamond's getting the farm, Hook misses, so nothing's gonna happen. And look where Genja is going. He's going down bottom. And speaking, speaking of the bottom lane, look at it. 39 to, th well, it's 33 now. It was 27 a moment ago. So has actually been quite heavily out farmed by Darian in this matchup. And he needs to be really careful here with this one. Gonna get slowed down. He's gonna dash off to the minion. Flashes away from the knockup, but it's not gonna be enough to get away. First blood, Darian. And this is all Diamond Proc starting us and a beautiful game read by Genja. He's, he's basically stepping outside of the meta game yet again, but they're engaged from Fresh. Well, they're going to try and go towards him, repels away from that hook straight away. Up. Will try and get back in there and actually turns around, puts a bit of damage back onto Yellowstar. And like you say, stepping out of the meta game, effectively becoming a top laner briefly. Yeah, he's going the top laner and Genja's roaming every time an AD carry bases early on a freeze like that. You expect him to come back and punish, punish the enemy team for allowing it to happen with an item advantage. For that scared they can't really come come there because they're afraid of Ganja coming back and then so as who the hell expects an AD carry to show up in the bot lane well apparently you do against Gambit and yeah, not really uh, much to be expected there and that's catching them off guard something that we I uh, don't really expect between two teams that have played each other so so very often because he's never done it it's yeah. a completely new Genja right here equally crazy but he's, he's tired of building <laughs> Crazy I am, so he's doing crazy roams instead. Those crazy Russians, they are up to all sorts. So Genja and Edward, they've rotated around and they are in a 2v1 lane now up against Soaz. Interestingly enough, finally Diamond has gone up there, but uh, Darian has gone up there, sorry, but Diamond, he took a lot of farm while he was in that lane. That's actually buffered him a little bit. And he's got that level advantage in the jungle now. At the same time, Fnatic's bot lane, or actually now top lane, the two people there, couldn't really counter farm as much because they were still scared of Genja coming back. And even you saw it when Diamond, he took a little damage onto Thresh because he even saw Reckles being so far back, being not in the in the damage zone. And, and really good read by Diamond. Even if it's like a small bit of damage, it just shows how well he's reading the attack zone from Corky. You see him there just backing away here, Darian, just to pick up as much as he can. Those golems going his way. The blue buff has also transferred over on towards Alex Hitch. Look at this, Diamond headed down bottom. He's gone over a ward, which means that he's not going to have the chance for a kill. But it also means that so has Den come near this lane. Yeah, they are absolutely being kept away. And, and now Darian has hit that level 7. He's got the pickaxe and longsword to go along with it. His wave clear is going to be pretty strong. There's no way they're going to be able to shove on that lane too heavily towards him. Diamond Prox waiting around the side. He's going to maybe go cast the cocoon on towards Sinai. I don't think he'll get the kill, but he's going to go full on aggressive. Pops that fear leash off. Will it be enough? Six comes in, remember. He's going to have that long range poke, but unstoppable forces available from Alex Inch, and they know it. They have to step away. And what Gambit lacks in siege potential, they just make up with pressure. They don't even siege turrets and slow and take it down they just say hey we're here you better move away or you'll die and that's exactly what they do look at the bottom tower down to 30 percent what does gambit do rotate into a drake no more time to push just go for the drake Drake is already been way started off and that's going to be taken for free here fanatic not going to get anywhere near this one to stop that from happening and that is going to be a nice reward for them as the lantern goes in like ah Confirmation, oh, confirmation for is. a timer, yeah. that's all they we get We see the time, at least for the next time, that that one's gonna be coming up. Let's have a look at some of the early CS count here. Peke versus Alexic, that's where the big difference is. 82 to 52 CS in the mid lane. Yeah, but Peke, Peke does have a push advantage there. Yeah, he's gonna beat Malphite. Of course he is, Malphite has nothing to offer. But once he hits level seven, eight, and nine, that's where the pressure comes in and he can come on. But the problem is there, it's only a 300 gold difference, but look at the top. 
That's an 800 gold difference. Look at the jungle. That's a big difference. And now they're diving in, Joe. Yeah, flash hook came out. There's the crescendo coming down. Soaz is super low, but it's Edward that actually falls in there. Soaz able to stay alive from that one. I mean, yeah, basically, really good gank. Transition into a tower push. This is exactly what Fnatic needs to do to get back into this game. Gambit caught a little off guard, and once they're dead, well, tower is a free push. Oh. Alex is popping down the bottom. Andrew Genja's been aggressed upon here. Cyanide gets that feeling. He's quite successful. Turns him in the right way. But now he's going to back away. And Alex is still back down there. He's going to stop a ball force away. He could catch one on towards the tower here. But it's only so as he'd be crazy to go for it. But he does anyway. And gets what kicked kick? instantly away. And that is going to be so as getting away just about with the ignite. That was a really damn well played play by Soas. He kicked him immediately, even as he got knocked up there, because one more auto attack would have killed him. Damn, Soas. Impressive. Impressive play. Now Diamond actually coming around the mid to X. Peke has got that blue buff on. Diamond didn't really want a piece of him. He's quite happy to sit back here and soak up a little bit of farm. But as you said, fantastic reactions, really, is what it was from Soas to get that kick. It had to be smart cast. <laughs> to get that kick off at the exact right time before he went down. And, uh, well, we didn't expect Alex to maybe go in for that one, but he was like, well, I can, I can do it. I can take this one. Not quite working out for him, but all that time that Alex is roaming again puts him even further behind in CS. As long as his team picks it up, though, it's fine. If you doesn't matter who gets the farm, as long as you get it all, it doesn't matter how you distribute it. You see that a lot with top laners like Rumble, or mid laners like Rumble, or mid laners like Malphite. They, they rely heavily on their ulti. As long as they get that off and they get the other members on their team farmed, for example, Diamond, he's at least percentual AP damage is really Really, really damn big thing. Yeah, and it was Diamond that actually picked it all up against Peke and that made sure the tower didn't get pushed in. And let's not forget Darren in this top lane. He's just been staying up here, farming away. And that's all he needs to do. He's going to become a tower pusher, but Joe, the Diamond on towards Soaz. I don't think I'm going to be able to pass this one because he's going to go down. The Ignite is running, and now it's Darian that picks it up. It's going to be a tough job in that top lane now for Soaz. Ziggs Bomb came in there from Peke, and he's going to try and rescue this turret. Darian. Obviously, he has his blood well available here, but it's not something that he'd uh, probably like to have popped at this point. So they decide just to walk away. Peke's pressure back manages to keep that tower up. I really like the way Gavin's playing out the weaknesses of the composition and playing the strengths. It's like these two man, three man combos with CC chains on top of each other and just really high amounts of damage coming out. That's really, really what they need to win this game, and they're doing it. This game is so good, it's making Krepo become more Belgium as we speak. <laughs> he's continuing, the accent's coming on strong. It started off Scottish at the weekend, but now he's into full it's Belgium. It's the Russian influence. <laughs> but right now, it's 2-1. Gambit are in the lead. You can see it's just about a thousand gold advantage they have. We saw a lot of bottom lane pushing, and we're back to it once again. Reckless being forced back by Genja taken down to about a quarter health, three quarters health there. Yellow Star also not able to land out that hook, but at the moment, it's Reckless with the CS advantage. Okay, Genja has ulti, so does Edward, and a crescendo calling combo could be enough to force them out of the lane. Not necessarily kill them, but get the tower, and we always see Diamond Fox approaching. Oh, this, this is really good poke from Genja, actually. He's catching on towards Reckless every time, and he has those rockets available. He has hit level six, but in terms of farm, look at Peke, level 11, he's way ahead. Yeah, absolute country mile, and he's got 1,700 gold to spend with him right now. As Genja and Edward continue to push this bottom wave up, Reckless just able to farm, obviously, at range now that he's got that six. There's a blue buff also going to be secured and given over to Peke for the second time. Yeah, he's getting really strong, but he'll have, he'll have to use that strength somewhere to help his teammates because, basically, people are just rotating in and out of his lane. He's sharing farm. Gamma's entire lineup is sharing farm throughout and just using it one by one by one by one. But Peke's taking all the farm, but he's not using it. He's just farming and farming, but he needs to start fighting. Well, look at the build that Darian's building. He's got that TM out in there. The Vampire Acceptor earlier on. I'm expecting some serious cleaving coming on as he gets in towards this later game. Cyanide and Yellowstar in this bottom lane, walking through a ward. They know exactly that they're there. I wonder whether Alex is just going to rotate in. I don't think they are. I think they're going to stick with a three-on-two stack in this bottom lane. Maybe a three-on-three. Three. Now Peke is trying to make a move, but every time he does, they step away. Diamond, he's hitting every single cocoon here today as well. Certainly on form with his aim. They know that Cyanide's there, they know that he's hanging around, and actually they've got the vision of this one. Cyanide, he's gonna pop on his spell shield and will be able to just walk off. Cocoon goes through and didn't hit Yellow Star, but he actually 
stop the recall to uh, well. get away. But this turret's gone. They've completely zoned them off it. Yeah, they're going to take the top turret as well. Darien, uh, unstoppable really up there. Soaz can't do anything about it. Now he's got that build starting to really stack up. He just needs to pop that ultimate and just cleave it down. As I said before, they don't have five-man siege, but they have, they have good combos they can play out with each other. Like, at least Sona Lucian still has the same amount of poke in the early game that can punish people defending a tower over and over, especially when they're in number disadvantage. Malphite is constantly disappearing from the lane. You don't see that much, but he's moving left and right on the minimap and constantly threatening the possible roam, not even doing it. Oh, is this a bait? Is this a bait, Joe? They're going to go in. That's going to be the cushion. No, going down. He's managed to get away with the lands and the ignite was taken, but they wanted a fight there. I was hoping Edward was going to go for the Korean play and put a ward on that lantern and then just deny it. But yeah, he just didn't quite do it. But still, he forces them out. And what they do, they capitalize on, on that play, taking a Drake yet again. Oh, this is dangerous, though. Edward actually, that's uh, so why Yellow Star coming around the side there, not quite able to get in. Alex, it takes a lot of damage. There's a bomb. It's not got enough on it just yet, though. Chalice, double Doran's ring for Peke. If he'd spent some of that 2,600 gold that he sat on, he probably would have got that kill. That's actually something, you know, that I, I was talking about earlier with Genja at the end of the COG game. He was sitting on about 5k by the time the game ended. It's like, he, the, the final push, he had about 4k in the bag before they even picked up any kills. It was like, that that could be dangerous because, you know, that just that item could be the big difference. But Fnatic get themselves a first tower in his Peke, unsurprisingly, because he's been dominating the mid. Because he didn't base, he kept adding pressure and mm. pressure and pressure. Other guys had to base. Peke's like, okay, I can buy right now and get stronger. But why do you need to get stronger to get objectives? If you can get them anyways, it might as well be worth saving your time and just getting a really big item, spiking up, and sometimes even surprising your opponents. If suddenly show up with a Rabadons or whatever you have, he went actually went for the Athenes here, but the spike in damage can really catch people off guard. So, definitely not a clear cut game at this point. Gambit with a 3,300 gold lead, up to one in turrets, as in kills as well. Things quieten down once again. The junglers back onto their paths. They saw that ward actually going down on the top side of their own jungle earlier on, so they know that they're in full vision of Gambit at this stage of things. But where are the next plays going to come in? We've just seen a, a pink ward being put down there in the brush by Edward, so we may expect to see Diamond trying to sneak through that lane to create some opportunities. I'm actually wondering when Cyanide's going to show up and actually make a play or a gank because so far, I mean, Gambit's overextending quite a lot. Hook going down in bottom. Hook gets on Zonzo. It's only Edward. They're just drilling forward. Not going to be enough to, to worry him, honestly. And speaking of uh, pressure, it's a gain in the top. Ravenous Hydra picked up now along with the Giant's Belt. Darien is not going to give up on that top lane. He's going hotshot GG style and just going to keep on shoving. So I hesitation there, though. Why didn't he follow up with the hook with into a flay with the Nocturne ulti? They were afraid, and they're, they're afraid of Gambit, and Gambit loves it when you're afraid because they'll toy with you like a prey you are. Ah, uh, there's Soaz coming out on towards Darien, and he's not one you want to mess with. He popped his ulti straight away from that one, and with a Hydra, he rips through these lanes. There's not really minion uh, problem clearing out those minions as they go, or a Soaz, it seems. He's down to half HP there from just a couple attacks out of Darien, and he's just backing away from that one now. We'll have to see though if Gamut's fix these mid-game transitions, because when we play them, often they get ahead in gold, but somehow they find a way to ruin that in the middle of the game. Well, Reckless and Yellow Star, gotta be careful, they've got a spider crawling around their jungle, along with a rather large rock, they throw out the cocoon, not gonna land on towards Cyanide, Cyanide once again taking a heck of a lot of poke from Diamond, Diamond has been bullying out of that jungle every single time he finds him. Down on the bottom side, Gambit continued to push this lane up. They're already up to that inner turret. They've got the wards down there. That red buff is going to be stolen away. And Fnatic starting to lose the control of their own jungle. That sets up a dangerous precedent moving forward. Slightly problematic for Gambit is though, they have to split push. They don't have 5v5. Five five and that means Nocturne can jump anywhere, followed up by the Ziggs bomb. But it does look like extra pressure on top one because of the passive Darien has. He can overextend because he doesn't even care about dying. The tower's going to go down to Darien, but Peke and Soaz are both there. They may try and get claps on towards him, but he can just jump away like that. He's taken an inner turret all on his own. And draws pressure to top lane, which allows a little chipping away in mid turret, and this is exactly what Darien has to do with Aatrox. Split push all day, draw aggro, jump out when he can, even if he if he has to die, they have to burn through his entire health, then his passive, wait for that to come up, and then kill him again. Meanwhile, Gambit can answer that with pushes throughout the entire map. So you're trying to suggest that Darien is actually Ivan Drago? Yeah, he's a... If he's got to die, <laughs> he dies. Oh, Peke getting caught out here. This could be real dangerous to Satchel, though. 
Well, lift him off to safety behind his own turret. Uh, Gambia have actually let this bottom lane push up a little bit further through now as well. So they uh, are going to draw Fnatic out if they want to get in there on any of that farm. A couple more items coming in as well. Reckless just finishing off that Trinity Force. The Tiamat now added in finally for Soaz. It just shows you how far behind he is, sadly, at this point. Interesting pickup, though. Uh, the blue have going to Alex, who already has some CDR coming uh, coming from his Athenes, which means he probably puts him around 40% already. That means maybe they're going for an ultimate play and they want to chain two Malphite ultis in a short span of time. Well, so far, Gambit... They seemingly are in the position to start pushing areas of the jungle. Peke comes around, just catches a glimpse of Alex Itch, but Alex Itch is motoring it down the bottom. That's where they want to focus. They can see they're forcing Fnatic back. And if it wasn't for spotting Alex quite so early, I'm not too sure if the warning signs would have gone off down the bottom lane. Instead, they are looking it to engage. Diamond, I think he was forced to flash away there. Yes, he was, so flash was burned from Diamond. Now, with that blue buff on Alex Ish and actually going for the Athenes and not really building super tanky, but actually going for a slight AP alteration of Malphite, combine that with Lucian and Sona and Elise having magic damage, they actually have a lot more poke than I initially suspected. Then they may actually may grow into the siege potential they need to close out this game. So let's see then. Fnatic here pushing that mid lane back out. They took the tower down earlier on, of course. Still lacking behind here and a lot of that coming from the farm that's for sure but you know the the, the way that gambit have been playing right now it's going to be hard to stop darren because he's a confidence player that guy you know it, when he's down you see him just wandering down in lanes and just dying over and over and over and over again but when he's feeling good that's when he's the most dangerous. A very interesting pickup by Edward here. He went for the Boots of Lucidity for even more CDR and upgraded them to reduce his flash cooldown. Looks like Garrett combined that with the, the notion that Alex got his blue buff for 40% CDR on Malphite ulti. They're going for repetitive plays on the enemy team. Normally 20 minutes into the game when you're this far ahead, you would see Baron plays vision contesting, but it looks like Gamut has chosen a different way to close out this game. Hopefully they can actually land these engagers because otherwise they might just give uh, Fnatic the time to scale back into the game because spending money on flash reduction and better boots and cooldown is all fine and well, but if you're not using it in your fights, you're just giving the enemy team a chance to come back. Funny thing actually, XPK, don't forget that because XPK right now being attacked in the mid lane. He is, oh, oh gets away lantern. with a lantern. The Ignite not enough to finish him off and Gambit, whilst not able to get the kill, have they done enough work here to carve themselves an opening on the tower? The classic double-edged sword. There's a lantern behind me and an enemy in front of me. Step I f Do I step forward and hit him and then he crosses me and takes the lantern? That's exactly what happened. And if Alex is blocked that lantern, Pekka was probably dead. Well, they're going to have to deal with Darian. He's got a 2k gold advantage over Soaz now. He's carved himself out in that top lane. And if he's allowed any free time on that tower, he will take it down no problem. Dragon was also picked up by Gambit as well. That stretched their gold lead just a little bit further. 5,000 now in the 22-minute mark. But this is, this is effectively a traditional Fnatic versus Gambit combo. Just one of the teams slowly edging ahead, but it's still never quite clear because we know that Fnatic or Gambit, if they were up against it, they can always carve themselves away back into a game. All in all, we've only seen two kills coming out in this game so far, like from Gambit's side and one from Fnatic, building so much fight potential actually coming out from Gambit, but they're not really using it. Yes, they're getting pressure, they're getting towers, but we've not seen this Wombo combo that's in their composition. Interesting fight for you. Peke actually earlier on bought Alacrity uh, upgrade for his boots and then sold it and picked up Distortion afterwards. I guess a bit of a uh, misclick from that. And it could just be a bit of a sign of lack of uh, concentration. We saw Peke in the, uh, at the start of the game having a bit of a yawn. It's been a long day, there's no doubt in that one here. So Maybe, maybe he's just feeling bit very confident. Yeah, doesn't need all, all that gold all he that. gets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can just just recycle that gold, no problem. Uh, but right now he's roaming around mid lane, of course, way ahead in the farm. He's taken that turret down earlier. He mops up all the uh, rates as he goes through. Fnatic here having to go Ooh. on the turret as they hook in Genja, but he's a little bit too far back there. Reckless going to finish off the tower, takes the lantern, and he's going to be back away from any harm. So you got to start. Will he be able to get away from this one? Oh, he's going to pass the ward. They're going to pass the ward, so Diamond is going to get spotted out. Cyanide is nearby as well. That Paranoia will have a fairly sizable range. He has at 11, so it will be up to level 2, and he should be able to get in and do damage. Look at Peke, though. He's almost level 18. He is miles ahead of anyone else on the board right now. Absolutely decimated the middle lane, and 
The question is, when we will see the power, that 300 CS he's now got, he's almost 100 CS ahead of Alex Sitch. When will we start seeing that power in action? Because it's 0, 0, 0 right now. I almost feel like Fnatic's comfortable just farming until Pekka spikes so immensely with Ravenon's death cap and then just gonna rely on his flash to dodge skill shots. Oh, Diamond and Soas having a bit of a fight here in the jungle, a bit of a turnaround, and here come the rest of Fnatic. Edward just backing away. Diamond actually repelled and managed to get himself Ooh. to safety. They're going in towards Peke. Finally, we see Diamond go down, but there's the crescendo coming across, and they're picking up kills left and right. A double kill for Darian, and it might not be over just yet. There's another one coming. It's Alex that mopped up that one, and that will be a three for one for the Russians. And this is why Elise is such a strong champion. Yes, you catch her, she repels up, jumps away, deals some damage, and in comes the Gambit Pain Train coming in from the side, immediately CC chaining, and yeah, Pekka just got blown up there. That was scary. Once Darian got involved, those big swords swinging away, and they were all grouped up, so that Hydra was just beating them all down. 4-0-1 now for Darian. We said it so many times throughout this weekend, throughout so many tournaments. Darian will either do godlike, or he will feed a little bit. Well, and usually once you start feeding, Gamut actually even wins because Darius, <laughs> all in all, is really good at drawing pressure to his lane. Doesn't care if he lives or die. He just push, 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 push. Gamut reacts. They're playing well on the reactive game. Uh, I don't really dis agree as much with Eddie's not so traditional support style, not going for too many wards and not going for the early oracles because I really feel like Gamut can definitely pressure a Nasher here and even force Vanek to face check them and then actually get their one more combo off. But who am I to disagree with the Thresh Prince? <laughs> now we see Diamond carrying that uh, Oracles right now and he's just done a bit of clearing out around the Baron. Obviously I have a pink ward up on the top side as well. Darian now 4-0-1 after that last fight. He sat on another 1,600 gold to go home and spend and uh, buy on top of that Ravenous Hydra and the Randuin's Omen, which makes him so hard to get away with with his kit, with the slow out of the Randuin's and the, the AoE damage that he gets off that Ravenous Hydra. Not easy to get away from, and if he's in the middle of your team, you're in trouble. Then you're definitely in trouble. It actually indicates that all Fnatic has going for them, all they need to hope for is basically Gamut making a mistake, the old Gadget coming back, split pushing all the way too far, and then actually maybe Malphite ulti missing, and then Zig doing a whole lot of damage, but right now, Gambit's just taking Asher. Well, I mean, they're seeing Genja, Genja in the bottom lane, they're seeing two in the mid lane, so there's no chance they're doing Baron, but it's a two-man Baron. Darian, of course, with that Ravenous Hydra, Diamond throwing his little spiderlings in there, and they're tanking out the damage quite easily. They've got good ward coverage, they know that nobody is anywhere near this on Fnatic. They saw Soaz going towards that top lane, and that is a two-man Baron, 26 minutes in. But we talk about German efficiency, but this is Russian efficiency. This is only three wards protecting the entire Baron area, and they just take it down with two people, distracting for Fnatic. Incredible. Edward proving right that you only needed those two wards to get that Asher. <laughs> yeah. He said, don't, don't argue with the Thresh Prince, yeah. man. <laughs> I just get one up. And that leaves them even further ahead. We're approaching the 10,000 gold. He's eight at this point. Gambit now with that Baron are going to be making Fnatic run scared. We've just seen a Thorn Nail picked up now by Darian. Very interesting build path that is going here, Krepper. Basically, they're telling us all that well, they're going to blow up Pekka and then deal with all the rest one by one by one. I mean, if Soas wants to duel Darian, he'll die. If 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 Cyanide wants to duel Darian, he'll die. If somehow Darian's split pushing and Pekka comes to clean the waves, he's okay with that because the rest of his team is just so weak that they'll die to the, the remaining 4v4. And funnily enough, Alex, it's the way he's building, it's like, it's, it's the fear of uh, uh, an Aram game, effectively, because he's the full AP Malphite, which you only ever normally see in an Aram. And actually, that, that four, I'd love to know how much that damage that can do, actually. It's going to be hitting for a hell of a lot. Yeah, it's already up to 680 as Unstoppable 4. So if that manages to find its target in about four or five people, followed with the Crescendo, followed with Darian diving in and getting that Hydra swinging, he is going to massacre that team. This is basically Gambit's is, is not going for like the one guy that's the full tank. They all have elements of damage and all have elements of tankiness. Alex is getting caught up. Yeah, we'll see if they can take him down though from this one. As you said, he's not exactly weak on his own and he dives in on towards Reckless with the unstoppable force. Reckless will <laughs> not get no. away. And I tell you what, in a one for versus three, that's not a bad outcome for it. Meanwhile, Gambit here are pushing straight down the mid lane. Yeah, they're all, basically every single member on Gambit has enough tankiness to survive for, survive for a very short oh, while. Dear. At the same time, dive into so much damage. Dead. 
Going to get him out of the Zonyas, but not going to be able to get away with this. It's a four-man Gambit pushing on towards the inhibitor to it. And, well, Darian's going to be hooking out, pulling that ultimate down. He's just going to be cleaving out that inhibitor. It's not going to survive. Look at the damage pounding down on towards it. Will they continue pushing? I wouldn't have thought so. They should step away from this one. And that's simply a kill trade. And then they get themselves in the inhib. Yeah, okay. Positioning on that bottom side as well there by the tribush. You can, it's a 1v3, Alex goes down, the rest of them are in position to swoop straight down in towards that middle inhibitor turret. We saw a great cocoon again from Diamond to actually start that one off. Yeah, definitely Diamond MVP solves all the issues the lanes have in early game and is everywhere he needs to be. One thing I'd question there, why didn't Pekka use his bomb to clear the wave? That, that would have stopped that dead and the rest of his team would have recalled, which they had, and they wouldn't be back there. They saw them turn up just as Inib died. Does Gambit even need a wave mm, to push in? That is a good question nope. with the Randians and the Thornmail. Darian probably could have I think it. I think after after Dreamhack 2011 or 2012, <laughs> whenever it was, they gave up on waves and they, they just, they're just going to storm yeah. the front. <laughs> you you proved the point during that tournament. And uh, we 27,000 difference! Good lord! Did anyone see Reckless? Because I didn't. Oh, he's gone. He is a goner. Uh, we all gave up on waves, by the way, after that game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Almost <laughs> gave up, almost on, gave up sure. on life halfway through it. It was that long. Uh, but Gambit here, I mean, it, when Alex can do that to your AD carry, unstoppable force is named for a reason. You're not going to be able to stop him getting in. See, usually I was never a big fan of AP Malphite because it's it's so binary. Either you get him or you don't. But it does seem like you get him immediately with this normal. Look at Eddie. He's like, look what I found. I've got a top laner and he's going to try and catch me. Not going to happen. Gets taken down. It's Genjiri gives the kill. I think this is this is almost approaching, approaching all she wrote for Fnatic. And I just hope they can wake up next game. But Gambit looking really strong. You know what it is? It's because Groove's here now. <laughs> Groove, came, Groove flew in from LA and sure as hell, Gambit are playing like they mean it. Yeah, they're not messing around, that's for sure. Edward actually getting that blue buff here from that last turn, uh, last turn around. Not letting it go over towards Alex. They're going to push onto this inner turret in the bottom lane. And this game is pretty far gone now, I think we can say, in terms of Fnatic's hope. 12,000 gold the difference goes, between Alex. them. And Pop, pop. Reckless in the last two minutes has spent more time dead than alive, actually. Yeah, I mean, th there's nothing, nothing at all that he can do about that other than stay Maybe. really far back. But even even Flash, I mean, you've got to be so quick on it. He did have Flash Wave, but Valkyrie available, but he's had a Flash ulti on him once. And with the DFG coming out so quick, he's just getting destroyed. And with yeah. the AD carry gone, there's not a lot they can do about stopping Gambit. He has to flash the impact, but even then, the Q will probably connect, the G will probably connect, and that's enough to take him to half HP. It just, Gambit is too far, and yeah, as you said, they're getting their groove on. Ooh, Diamond caught out. He's going to have to repel away from this one. The bomb comes down, but he had a one little minion that he could repel to. And that's the pro You see a bit of a problem here from Peke. Won his lane by a mile in terms of CS, took down the turret early, had this massive advantage in terms of the CS numbers and gold, but... What is it really brought them to the table at this point? Nothing. The rest of his team fell too far behind. And can you can you say that's the rest of his team fault? Is that Pekka's fault? It doesn't even matter. Oh. As a collective, Fnatic is just not there. Did not know he was there. It was a lucky shot. So as soon as he finds it, that's going to be a hook on towards Diamond. Yellowstar comes back in. But so as is like, don't even think about it. Run for your life, man. There's a crazy Russians coming down the lane. <laughs> and now going to keep going down that lane as well. A minion wave coming down. Already seen, they don't really need minions to be honest. This time might play a little bit more cautious with that one. Nope, they're gonna wait till they've got just one cast a minion, then they're gonna go in. For yeah, it. they're basically waiting for top and mid to push in a little bit and then Alex is probably still deciding who he's gonna pop and just one shot <laughs> completely. Let's see at the at the kills for Fnatic, whose KDA can be ruined the most by Alex jumping in. Well, if Reckless is like, I'm, I'm staying back here, guys. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'll good. Valkyrie in if I need to be there, rather <laughs> yeah. than be there and Valkyrie out. I'm not going to be anywhere near this one. Oh, he thought about it. Look, he came around the side and immediately saw Speaking Alex boom. just peek around the corner. He's going to get caught. He's going to get destroyed. That is a complete multi-kill. And it's going to become all she wrote for Fnatic. That will be Gambit surely taking game one here. And really, what a fantastic performance they've put in. I think if we sum this up, all this game is about is Domoy. I think that's pretty much it. They are not messing around here. Surrender vote in the end for Fnatic. And that will be a massacre. I think it's somewhat of an understatement maybe coming in. 57.5 to 43,000 gold in the end. 14 three in kills, 8 two in turrets. Absolute brilliance from Gambit. And Darian, I want to say again, <laughs> look at him. He's got the swag. We've seen Four that many a time before.
either plays amazingly well and aggressive and he's just scary, or he gives up a load of, like, his, his performance this tournament is possibly the best series of games following each other that we might have seen from Darien ever. Yeah, I saw some hesitation in one of these games. He still played very well. He could have played a little better, but this game, for example, he was just stellar. Just top-notch, top laning experience coming out from Darien. And the irony is, Genji is also playing brilliant, but Darien's performance is outshining him. You know, Genji seems to be switching back to... He's found his aggression. Eddie's back with him, and suddenly he's feeling confident. Suddenly we're seeing a, a, a Genja that we had gone missing throughout the summer. But like you say, Darian, you've got to not give him Aatrox. 406 is a champion he is so comfortable on. And again, he's put in a fantastic performance. And Cyanide, I have to say, on the you know the flip side of this coin, that they, we saw two of his champions go. We saw Elise go and uh, Aatrox go right at the very start to Gambit after they picked up Thresh as the first pick. Um, with a Nocturne, he didn't really get involved. We didn't see the use of that ultimate that Fnatic probably would have needed to get things rolling. That ties in into the point I was about to make. As we saw Gamut actually pace a little bit during the early game and the mid game. I mean, they had this combo from level six, like this CC chain, like getting one target and blowing him up and saying, see hero, kill hero again, but it never came out. And I can't help but feel like, imagine if Cyanide was there to punish them while they were pacing, but it just didn't come out with Nocturne. A lot of hesitation coming from Fnatic side, and maybe they need to switch the jungle, or maybe even get a Jarvan. It's a little more straightforward, a lot more gang paths coming out. You can jump over walls. Basically, just they didn't get the, the, the hook combo or the lantern Nocturne combo in. They, they couldn't achieve anything. For the longest time, this game was stuck in a one and two kills, and once Gambit flicked the kill switch, it and was over. And looking at Peke, you know, 412 CS, 130. Compare that to, say, how Peke played Ziggs, compared to how Link played Ziggs. Ziggs was non-stop roaming. That bomb has got a long range, and you've got to reuse it for a reason. But the problem is there was no nothing created for him. He could have come no down to the bottom a number of times, just throwing the bomb simply to create uh, some pressure. CS doesn't win you games. It's the same uh, same thing that actually was a downfall of CLG so many games. Yes, Doublelift was farming in the side lane, but there was no pressure coming out, and the team would just obliterate you in a team fight. If you're the one guy with all this farm, and you're, you're facing Cocoon, the Darien jumping in, Malphite ulti, Crescendo, even even just Genja blasting away at you with the culling. Like, what are you gonna do with that farm? You're just gonna blow up, and you just hope that your Zonias makes you survive long enough, but just wasn't enough for Fnatic. Well, a solid game one victory here, but it is a best of three, so at least one more to come. We'll see if Fnatic can pull themselves back into this grand final in just a few minutes. But first of all, we're gonna check in with Red Eye to take you through the winners of our Facebook contest. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we uh, aren't quite ready for the winners yet, actually. Uh, we still need to have a look through some of the entries. There have been a ton of entries, actually, and uh, of those entries, there's been a very special one that we've just figured out. So uh, we thought we'd show you this one. This is just a very good example of some of the uh, entries that we've had over the last couple of days. This is uh, from TB Skyen. Uh, this is the new champion that he wants in League of Legends called the Caster Desk. Uh, he wants the whole desk in there, presumably with four commentators. Uh, Joe, uh, D-Man on there as well, Jason and Quickshot, all on the, uh, the caster desk. It's got a passive on here, it's called Map Awareness. Uh, the caster desk gains ability power based on how much of the map is visible to their team. Now, there's also a few others in there. Oh my lord, a perfect engage, which is a, a switchable, you know, cue. Uh, casting mistake or interview where they, uh, they send out a uh, skill shot host in a straight line. There's a few in here as well. Uh, casting mistakes, oxygen tanks, and throws as well are also in there. Uh, so a bit of fun. Thank you very much, Sky. And, uh, he puts in a lot of effort for the casters, and we really do appreciate the fun that he has uh, comically with us. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break now. When we come back, we'll see whether Fnatic can come back into the grand final or whether Gambit Gaming can claim yet another Intel Extreme Masters trophy.